Hello students and welcome back to the next lesson in AS level psychology. Today we will be looking at measures of dispersion. So what are measures of dispersion? In the last video we looked at central tendency and that focused on measuring and analysing results based upon the centralised numbers from that sort of set of results. So that looked at mainly averages and medians. However, in measures of dispersion we're going to look at how spread out these results are. So we are going to look at extremes on pretty much either side of the data. So central tendency is looking at the centralised numbers and measure of dispersion is looking at those sort of numbers on the ends. So there's three types of measures of dispersion and these are the range, the semi and diquartile range and standard deviation. So first we'll look at the range and this is calculated by subtracting the smallest number of a set of results from the biggest. The main advantage for this is that it's going to be easy to calculate, however the disadvantage is that it is going to be affected by extremes. That is to say, if we have a set of results of test scores which are 20%, 30%, 20% and 40% and we have one reading which is 100%, our range is going to be much higher than what we would actually expect from you know, the normal set of results because that one extreme has changed what the range should be perceived as. So as a result, these um, test scores seem invalid just by looking at the range. Next up we have the semi and diquartile range. And this measures the spread of the middle 50% of the scores. So in order to work it out, we have three easy steps. The first one is to calculate something we call the lower quartile. And this is pretty much getting the number of results, adding one to it, and dividing it by four. Next up, we have to calculate the upper quartile, which is the exact same calculation. But instead, we multiply the number of results by three before we add the one to it, and then divide by four. And then finally, we subtract the upper quartile from the lower quartile and divide by two, which should then give us our answer. So the advantage of this is that it is unaffected by extreme results, but the disadvantage is that it only uses 50% of the results, so it doesn't calculate the spread of them all that well. Next up we have standard deviation, and you're not going to have to know how to calculate this at all for AS psychology, all you're going to need to know is that it is a measure of dispersion of results from a mean result. So that's pretty much it. You don't have to know um, the calculations, you're not going to be asked a test or asked a question in the test about you know how well you can calculate it at all using a calculator or you know working it out or whatever. All you have to know is that the advantage is that it takes all the readings into account, but it is hard and laborious to calculate. That's probably why you know you don't have to know it. So our questions here you have them I would advise you to attempt them by pausing the video and closing your sort of notes so you can't see them once you are done hit play and check out the answers and I'll be waiting on the other side okay so here are the answers if you did get all three of them correct congratulations I'd advise you to move on to the next video in the playlist however if you did not uh, I'd advise you to go back and just have a look at what you went um, we did incorrectly so you can get all of them right to prepare you for the exam okay so we have reached the end of the lesson next lesson we will be approaching the final part of our first section which is research methods and these are types of graphs if you also need help in any other of your uh, a-level courses be sure to check out the channel where there is a range of different subjects which you can then revise from and until then I will see you next time